Good morning, friends. So, it is now Thursday morning. I did not read any more last night. I did watch Coming Home for Christmas, the movie, and though, like, the core of what's going on in the story is, like, the same, they go about it very differently. So I did do a book-to-movie comparison, and which one I prefer. That'll be up by the time this vlog is up, so I will leave that linked for you, and I won't spoil you for my thoughts. Just go check out that video. So, today, I did a check-in with my buddy for our buddy read, and I found out that Steve is able to read more than I initially thought. His train rides were longer than I realized. So, he's like, twice as far ahead of me as where I'm at right now because I was afraid about pacing him. So what I'm going to do is I did bring my physical copy of Renegades with me. So I'm going to read that this morning and get caught up to him. And then I'll probably switch back over to my audiobook so I don't get too far ahead of him because he doesn't read over the weekend and he's traveling with family this weekend. So that's going to be my plan here for today. Um, I also have a couple, well I have quite a few other Christmas reading options with me. Um, at work I left the corner of Holly and Ivy, so I've got that I can read. I also have a bunch more Jenny Hale on my Kindle. I also found out um, that Mary Inkmas, there's a read-along or like a group reading this book this Christmas, so I looked on Kindle to see if it was like free or a dollar or something, and it happens to be free right now. If it's still free by the time this is up, I'll leave a link down below for you. But I think I might try that one as well because it's always fun to read with people. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to read outside of Renegades today. I haven't really decided yet. So once I decide, I'll let you guys know, probably in a B-roll clip of whatever I'm reading. But the focus today, for sure, is going to be Renegades and getting caught up with my buddy because by the time I'll be able to check in with him, he'll have had his uh, train ride home as well. So I'm probably 150 to 200 pages behind him at this point. And so I really, because I don't know like page wise where I'm at because I've strictly been doing the audiobook. I'll find out once I get to work and I'll let you know then or I'll insert the number here if I remember. <laughs> But yeah, that's kind of what's going on and where I'm at. Just wanted to do a quick update this morning. I need to go to the gas station and get some gas so that, you know, I don't run out of gas on the way to work. But yes, that's kind of what's going on this morning. But I would just check in, let you guys know, and I will chat with y'all. Okay, friends. So I just got to about page 300 in Renegades. It is better than I was expecting. I'm really enjoying the direction that Marissa Meyer chose to take this story so far. Um, we've got infiltrations of the Renegades and such, and it's, it's really good so far. I can already tell politically that this is kind of making its own, it's taking its own take on what would happen if our government essentially fell apart and I like the way it's going, I guess you could say. And it's, it's better than I was expecting it to be. So I'm really glad that I'm doing this buddy read with Steve. And if you guys, seriously guys, if you have not checked out his channel, I will leave him linked down below. Like go check it out. He does lots of movies and TV shows. He does a little bit of books, but it's mostly movies and TV shows and all that kind of stuff. So, um, definitely go check out his channel. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's one of my favorite content creators. So yes, anyhow, Renegades, it's good so far, but I'm going to put this down for today. Um, I read a good, almost 200 pages in it this morning. So just so I don't outpace Steve too much, I'm going to put this down for today. And now I need to decide what I'm going to read next. So I've got The Corner of Holly and Ivy here, but originally I thought it was one of the Christmas Colorado books, so I was super excited for it. And now that I found out it's not, and I'm going to be dealing with a bunch of characters that I don't know, 
I don't know if I really want to jump into that one. So I'm going to pull up my Kindle as well and see what I feel like reading off of that. So I'll check back in in a Okay, so I do have Mary Inkmas that I've downloaded. And then I've got... And this one's going to be Smutty Times. And most of my reads so far haven't been really, like, smutty. So that's a very strong possibility. But I might save that for Smutathon too. So I don't know yet. But then... I've got these four Christmas books. I've got All I Want for Christmas, We'll Always Have Christmas, and A Christmas to Remember, all by Jenny Hale, as well as Eating Her Christmas Cookies by Alina Jacobs. I haven't read anything by her yet, so I might try this one. Yeah, I think I'm going to try Eating Her Christmas Cookies. Christmas cookies are a big thing in my family, so I think I'll do this. And since I know I'm not going to finish Renegades before the end of this readathon, there's a good chance that this will end up subbing what Renegades was because that was something with red on the cover and there's quite a bit of red on this cute cover. So there's a good chance that I will do that. So I'm going to read Eating Her Christmas Cookies because I think it's going to be a good time. So let's go ahead and dig right in. <laughs> Hello. It is much later in the day. So I had a busier day than I originally planned. It's like 9.15 at night now. I haven't gotten any reading done since I got home. Well, I caught up on my web comics and my webtoons, but I haven't gotten any like tis the season of thon reading done since I got home. But I did get started on eating her Christmas cookies. And yes, that is a euphemism with the way this book is going. And anyways, I'm like a third of the way through at this point. I'm really enjoying it more than I thought I would, if I'm totally honest with myself. You know, I thought it would be interesting, and I, you know, Christmas cookies are kind of a big thing in my family. So, anyways, this is like a Instagram influencer who is like a baker, and she gets put on this, it's called The Great Christmas Bake Off. So it's kind of like The Great British baking show you know like one of those cooking shows but it's for Christmas time anyway so she of course loves Christmas and everything about Christmas and our male protagonist Jack Frost you heard that right ladies and gentlemen his name is Jack Frost owns Frost Tower where everything is taking place and he is also one of the judges for this competition and <coughs> obviously they're instantly <laughs> physically attracted to each other but no smut has gone down yet but it's it's headed there and I can totally tell and yeah it's it's been fun I don't think it's gonna get above three stars if I'm honest with myself but it's still a fun smutty time so far the angst is high I like it there's a stalker girl involved in all of this and yeah anyways it's interesting it's fun it's just a good time. Good morning, friends. It is now Friday. As I was telling you last night, my work day is crazy today. I am glammed today. I've got a really intensive color this morning, another color this afternoon, and then an additional hair care as well. <coughs> so I won't get tons of reading time in at work like I have the last few days. So the plan for today is to finish eating her Christmas cookies. And yeah, the further I get into this book, that's definitely like a euphemism. So anyways, our Jack Frost character is very frosty, hates Christmas, all that kind of thing. Then he gets roped into hosting, not hosting, well, yes, hosting, but being a judge on this great Christmas Bake Off internet series. And so they get a bunch of influencers and one of the girls is named Chloe and she's very good at what she does. But she ends up meeting him. He says he hates Christmas and he hates sweets. So her goal in the competition is to get him to like her, her sweets, to teach him that sweets aren't all created equal. And so that's kind of the general premise of the book. And you know, there was instant attraction I do like that Chloe is more of a curvy girl. She's not, 
you know, this itty bitty tiny girl, she's a baker and she tests her sweets. So she's not going to be the thinnest girl in existence. So she's just this, you know, petite yet curvy girl. And there's this aspect of the story that's just kind of ridiculous. So she has this huge Instagram fan base, right? So her fans found out she's on the show. So they're sending her these like Christmas outfits to pose in. And that ends up playing a part in how her and Jack Frost interact. And it's, it's funny yet cringy. It's kind of the easiest way to describe that. So yeah, I'm liking it. Like I was saying yesterday, I don't think it's going to get above three stars for me, but that doesn't mean I'm not enjoying it. I mean, this is, it's very stereotypical at this point and I'm okay with that. I knew that's what I was most likely getting into with a title like eating her Christmas cookies. So my goal today is just to finish that. I'm at about the halfway point. I did some more reading last night and it's still going exactly how I expected it to. So no surprises yet. There's an aspect where he has this stalker, as he calls her. It's a childhood friend who's kind of become fixated and obsessed on being the one he's going to marry, but he's never been attracted to her. He's never had a relationship with her, but she has it in her head that they're meant to be. And the parents obviously agree, but he has no relationship with his parents. So his growing up, it's still cryptic at this point, but obviously they weren't loving parents. And that's been made very clear. And there's a sister that's basically been like chased off. Nobody knows where she is, but you know, it's just this big convoluted drama mess and I'm here for it. I don't mind it at all. I think it's fun, but you know, obviously not my favorite kind of book, not going to be the best book I read all year, not even the best book of this readathon, but it's still fun and I'm still enjoying it. So that's where I'm at. And I just wanted to, again, remind you that, you know, vlogging today is going to be put on the back burner. My work is my priority, obviously. And when I work, I'm with my clients. And so I don't fixate on like my reading and stuff when I'm with my clients. Usually even when they're processing, especially with at least one of the clients I have today, my longer intensive color. Um, her and I have a lot that we like to talk about. She'll just pop into my salon. She's one of the other owners in my complex. So we'll have a lot to talk about. So I really want to um, just sit and visit with her. So I probably won't read anything while she's in the salon. But outside of that, um, I do always schedule a lunch break. I don't always get it. And this is the first time I've colored this person's hair. So I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. And I never know how long it's gonna take. Because some people legitimately have thick hair and don't tell me, and then other people tell me they have thick hair, but it doesn't feel thick. So she says she has thick hair, so I don't know if it's legitimately thick or not. So we'll figure that out while we're at it. But yeah, it's gonna be a wild ride today. And we'll see what happens. So I just wanted to check in at least once before work. I probably won't check in at all at work. I might check in again tonight, let you know what happened throughout the day. Hey guys. So I'm headed home from work. I did not really get any reading done at work today. I caught up on other things though on my downtime. I caught up on watching some YouTube. I caught up on, um, just some other little things and stories that I read on my phone because my windows were so small that I didn't really want to dig in to the book. So I have confirmed with my husband, we are going to go to our neighborhood Christmas party at our church. So we're going to go to our church Christmas party tonight. And so it's, I got done at work a little earlier than I originally thought. The party starts at 6 or 6.30, I can't remember, and it's 4.20 now. So I'm going to try to get some good, solid reading in 
right now. And then from there, I'm going to, um, we'll go to the party. It'll last like an hour and a half probably. So we'll be done by 7.38ish, depending on when things are done. And then I'll come home and I'll read some more. It's Friday, so I have to be up early tomorrow. My first appointment's at 9 a.m., so I can't really drag my feet or anything. And I can't stay up super late. But I might stay up a little bit later than normal just to get a little more reading. So real quick, before I do anything else, I did pick up a couple volumes of manga. So I wanted to talk to you guys about them. Because I am that person. I love manga. So I picked up a few continuations at... Barnes & Noble recently when I was out running errands yesterday, actually. So, the first one I picked up is Volume 6 of Takane and Hana. And this is a series I've really been loving. If you haven't been following my manga updates, this series is about two people, obviously, Takane and Hana. Hana is a 16-year-old girl who has an older sister. Her older sister was set up to go on a marriage interview. Sister didn't want to go, but dad works for the company of the people that they were set up with. So to save dad's own butt, Hana comes along on this marriage interview and she meets up with Takane and he's like 26. So there's like a 10 year age difference. And he is immediately enamored with Hana because in the middle of the marriage interview, she basically stands up and gets in his face and yells at him and walks away. So she is just a sassy character. Their banter together is really fun. Even by volume six, things are still pretty innocent at this point. Nothing like super shady is going on with this relationship or anything because he knows she's young and one, it would be bad for his reputation and for his job if they found out that he liked her. So they're... You know, they're being pretty quiet about things. Things are still really quite innocent. And so it's not a super cringy thing, but it's really fun and I'm really enjoying it. So take that for what you will. I like it more than I thought. It's definitely shoujo like comedy. And then I also picked up volume five of My Little Monster. My Little Monster is a story that I'm really loving right now. Again, this is a story about a smart, sassy teenage girl who's kind of sent to get the school delinquent to come back to school because he's really quite smart. He's just lazy and doesn't come to school. And so after she interacts with school delinquent, he's immediately enamored with her and starts coming to school and tries to chase her and date her and things. And so this is like a slow burn, lots of fun. And this is definitely very contemporary. It's really fun. I... I just really have been enjoying it. Check out my Bizarre's 24-hour readathon if you want to hear more of my thoughts about this because I read two volumes during that. I read volumes three and four during that readathon, so I talk about My Little Monster quite a bit. I talk more about Waiting for Spring, but I still talk about My Little Monster quite a bit. And then the last one I picked up is volume three of Clockwork Planet. Clockwork Planet is a almost steampunk-style manga in which the planet Earth is basically dissolved to a point where it's all almost been rebuilt in a steampunk style fashion. In the first volume, we have a young teenage boy who shows up at, he's at home. He's very talented when it comes to the technology of their world. And he has a talent where he can specifically hear what's wrong with something and go in and fix it. What happens is this crate drops into his apartment in this almost raid kind of style. And what's in it is this beautiful, perfect automaton robot. And it's not working. And so he repairs it and gets it working. And the story continues from there. So it's really fun. It's a really enjoyable series. I really have been enjoying it. I really like the art style. I picked this up on a whim for 24-hour Tezuka. And I ended up really enjoying it. I, I mean, I've picked up the third volume at this point. This is one that I'm just going to buy volume by volume. And if it gets to a point 
where I don't enjoy it anymore, then I'm not going to continue to buy it. But it's one that I just buy one volume at a time. I have a couple series that I do that with. But that one was there. They don't always have Clockwork Planet at Barnes & Nobles near me. So when I saw this one, I went ahead and picked it up because I don't know the next time I'll see it. So anyways, I'm going to go get some reading done. Hey, friends. So we're back from the Christmas party. But on the way back from the Christmas party, we took a little detour. I went to Barnes & Noble and I got some stuff. And I want to show you. So let's just dig in one at a time. So first up, we have again volume two. I read the first volume of this during 24-hour Tezuka and really liked it. This is about a boy who just kind of coasted through high school, you could say. And on the last day of high school, he has a lot of regrets. Something happens, and he wakes up the next morning, his first day of high school, and he gets to do high school all over again. I personally would never want to do high school all over again, but I really like their take on this. So I'm, I'm just going to slowly pick these up as I'm, as I want and I'm continue to be interested in it because I don't know if I will continue through the whole run or not. We'll see how volume two goes. Next up, we have To Your Eternity volume three because I feel like ripping out a part of my soul once again. To Your Eternity is a story in which you're following this orb, and it has the capability to morph into different creatures. It kind of consumes, I guess you could say. So it's about its adventures, learning the people and creatures it comes across, and what happens to them. This, both volumes so far have made me cry. This is an emotional series, but it is so good. If you like emotional stories and stories that are very character driven this is your kind of manga series next up i had to pick up the next batch of neon genesis evangelion because i'm borderline obsessed at this point so i read the first six volumes so i picked up the third omnibus which is volume seven eight and nine with the way the last omnibus ended i really need to continue on if you're not familiar with what neon genesis evangelion is this is a Mecha manga is what it's classified as, where we're dealing with teenagers who go inside battle robots to protect their universe, their world. Teenagers with attitudes. Yes, teenagers with toods, that's for sure. And this character on the front, I still, I'm not sure about her. But anyway, this, <laughs> yeah, I don't like her. She's a B word. My husband's rolling his eyes at me and not... Not sure. So at this point, I don't like her. It doesn't mean I'm going to not like her forever. But right now, I don't like her because she's a snot. And I hate her. I hope she grows on me. But right now, I really don't like her. Anyways, moving on. Next up, we have Ancient Omega's Bride, The Golden Yarn. You guys know my obsession with Ancient Omega's Bride. This is a short story compilation of stories that happen within the world of Ancient Omega's Bride. And it's an actual, like, book rather than a manga. So I am here for it. I'm living for it. And I cannot wait to dig in and learn more about the world, hoping it will get me through until I get my next volume, which will be, like, February. But I still have, like, three months. So I need something in the meantime. And last but not least, I picked up Arch Enemies, the sequel to Renegades, which I am currently reading. I like Renegades enough to know I'm going to want to complete the duology. So here I am at Arch Enemies. So I haven't read the flap or anything because I don't want to spoil myself for what's going to happen in Renegades. So here's to it. I've listened to book two thus far and been glad I have. So yes, I picked up Arch Enemies and will be continuing on after Renegades because I know Steve from Lawnum, who I'm buddy reading Renegades with, also has Arch Enemies. So we'll probably just continue on. So that's it for now. I'm still reading Eating Her Christmas Cookies. And I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's getting more crass. Yes, the title is Eating Her Christmas Cookies. And yes, it's a euphemism. Yeah. That's obvious. <laughs> but yes, it's definitely smutty at this point. It's borderline crass. Like, the smut isn't elegant. We'll put it that way. Anyways, I'll tell you more when I finish because I will probably finish tonight before bed. So, in the meantime, husband is eating some food 
and because he didn't want to eat at the party. And we're going to watch an episode of Wotokoi because I love Wotokoi. I'll do a whole video talking about Wotokoi once we're done with the anime. So, okay, friends. So I just finished eating her Christmas cookies and it ended okay. <laughs> My husband is so cringing at the title. But guess what? I just found out. There's a sequel and it's called Eating Her Baked Goods. As long as it's not eating her peach cobbler, we're okay. <laughs> Anyways, so it's a three-star read. I mean, it wasn't great. Like, it wasn't the best read ever. But it was a fun little Christmas read. I had a good time with it. So, yeah. It was a good time. But, yes, that's... That's what she said. <laughs> He just said that's what she said if it didn't come across. But. So, clearly, I'm vlogging this morning anyway. So, I wanted to touch base with you guys, let you know what's up. So, I'm headed to work, obviously. And I knew that I wasn't going to have a lot of time for reading today. So, I brought my volume of Takane and Hana that I picked up earlier this week. And I think if I get a chance to read, that's what I'll probably read. It's lighthearted enough. The chapters are so, like, short and close together that it's easy for me to put down manga. So that's why I decided to go with that. Because I remembered one of my colors, her process takes a little bit longer than most. So I think while she processes, because she processes under a dryer. So I don't have to necessarily keep up a long conversation with her. Um... I would be able to just kind of read while she processes. And I'm really kind of excited about that. I forgot about that. <laughs> but yes, I'm tired this morning. But for the most part, I feel good. I'll wake up here quick. I'll get something. <coughs> I'll get some food and stuff in my system and I'll feel a lot better. Hey friends, it's like 3.30 on Saturday. I ended up getting out of work earlier than planned. So since I've been home, I have already filmed, edited, and uploaded my Smutathon TBR. I will leave that link for you to check out. And just kind of had some wind down time from work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read Takane and Hana, and then I'm going to wrap this vlog right here. Because that will have covered every challenge in Tis the Seasonathon, and I think I'm just going to take tomorrow kind of chill, take a break from vlogging, because I do plan on vlogging for Smutathon as well. And I think I'm going to break this up in this vlog up into three days and three days. So we'll have days one, two, and three together and days four, five, six. And I'll put seven on the description, but I'm not going to vlog at all on day seven because this will complete all of the challenges and girlfriend needs a break. So I'm going to go ahead and read this and then I will talk to you more about Takane and Hana when I finish. Okay, guys, so there is some big stuff that happened in this particular volume of Takane and Hana. Um, so essentially in this story, we've been following, ugh, in this story, we've been following a, a very wealthy man and a teenage girl having this weird, innocent kind of relationship. Hana challenges Takane in ways no one else has, and it intrigues him, and so he continues to spend time with her and he wants to have a romantic relationship with her but he wants to wait until she's a little bit older so they hang out and spend a lot of time together and such but you know he kind of had the, his way paved for him due to family connections and such and what happened in this volume is everything's kind of ripped out from under him and he has to start from scratch and he kind of freaks out pushes Hana away and stuff and so it's really like, this was a really deep volume for me. Like, I felt like there was a lot of character development. And I think it will lead to great character growth in the future volumes. And so I'm really loving what's going on right now. So I feel like it just keeps getting deeper. And I like it. I like it a lot. So that's how I'm feeling about Takane and Hana at the moment. And for me, that concludes 
tis the season a thon. As I said, I was going to read two from Galilee, but I'm going to keep that private. I'm not going to vlog that. So I'm going to go ahead and end my vlog here. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and checking out these vlogs. I am so grateful to all of you and my viewership. My channel has seen a decent amount of growth this year. It's doubled this year. And I'm really grateful to each and every one of you. I'm not necessarily in this for the subscribers. But I am in this because I love it and it's fun. It's a great way to channel my hobby of reading. But yes, I am grateful to each and every one of you subscribers. It makes it all the more fun when I have more people I can talk about and share these things with. So thanks again for watching. If you're new, please like and subscribe. And click the little bell icon so you know when to come chill with me. And I will see you guys in the next one.